A civil society organization, Action Aid Nigeria has tasked Nigerian youth to hold government accountable for poor development of their communities. The country director of the group, Ene Obi, made this known at an event to discuss the role of women and girls in Nigeria democracy held in Abuja. Obi says Nigerians must ensure corrupt politicians at all levels are not allowed to get away with their crimes. We have almost about 140 million Nigerians living below the poverty line before the coming of another flood. A flood is looming. Nobody is talking about the dredging of the Niger. They said they just make noise and then the dredging is gone. People have taken money for it. Nobody is queried and then we are facing. Because we work with the communities. Working with the communities make it difficult for you. Sometimes you go to the communities, you come back. You need a psychosocial you know, a, a, a assistance for you to be real again. Are you going to choose to stand upright for Nigeria wherever you are? Where you are now as a youth of Nigeria, are you standing upright? Are you asking the questions that you are supposed to be asking? For me, that is my life. It's the life of so many of the leaders of agencies that you see here. I will continue to stand upright Social justice is my struggle, is a struggle for so many of you. Some people who will try to condemn us, they have never seen the four walls of a detention. And so it's easy. We struggled for the democracy. We want our voice heard, and not just heard, we want our voice respected. Because there's a big issue around respect in this country. And that's why yesterday we saw the show of shame at what happened at the High Court in Lagos yesterday. It's deplorable. We condemn it in every form, in every space, and that is supposed to be some of the highest ranking members of the society. Imagine it was a young person that was arrested. What will happen? We are getting this kind of visibility because of the person involved. What, tell, what it means is that if at that level our laws and systems can be bastardized and ignored, what will happen at the levels where the camera is not focusing on you? What will happen if you fall into the hands of some of the government agencies that do not have the kind of visibility that God in the Mayfield they will have? What will happen to young people? These are the reasons why we have gathered to talk. Let us say it as it is. And as we say it in common parlance in Nigeria, let us say it from our stomach. As it affects us and as it, you know, disturbs us, let us say it here. We are marginalized at the party level. And you know that for you to be a candidate, you must belong to a political party. You need a platform, you know, to uh, give you their ticket for you to contest any election. So the marginalization starts from the political parties. And, you know, it was because of this that we Nigerian women came up with the five gender bills. Where we said we need a permittive action at the party level, executive level of parties. And we also said appointive positions, that should be affirmative action. And then talking about, you know, citizenship and the rest. And the most important of all the bills is the extra seat for women. There has to be a deliberate um, uh, thing, you know, for the government, for the legislature, for the people to support. It will have to be deliberate about it. How can we make women come up? The only way is equity. So when people look at it and then some people misunderstand it and say that women want to be equal, we are not looking at equality. We are looking at equity. Okay? If we can't stand you know, to see the uh, uh, above the uh, barriers. Give us something to step on, so that will help us. And that's why we are saying, let us have special seats for women. With the special seats, women will come up, and it's something that is timed. And so when we get to that point, you will see that we've been able to bring up more women, and then we'll remove the um, ladder, so we can now compete. As it is, we can't compete. Right, it's unfortunate that we've both in the House and the Senate, we have less uh, women uh, in both chambers at the moment. So compared to the previous assembly, uh, this assembly has less women in the House and the federal representative and the Senate. It's quite tragic um, and I think we need a deliberate effort. It must be deliberate by both parties and even us as elected officials to ensure we don't forget that rule because sometimes it's easy to forget so you have to deliberately go out of your way 
I, um, um, I must give my father credit. Uh, it's not just a female deputy governor. I think he ended his tenure with more women as commissioners than men. But it was a deliberate process to scout that in Kaduna State. And I think um, our, our other father, the current governor of Kwara State, uh, His Excellency Abdurazak, is doing the same thing. You know, young women in assembly and executive positions and the difference are quite clear. Uh, I think I speak for all three of us. We are friends. We align in many areas, despite the fact we're from different geopolitical zones. Nobu Shaga is from the north central, I'm from the northwest. Akala, Honorable Akala is from the southwest. But our, our vision is clear and we are willing to partner with organizations like PLAN. We are benefits of Yaga and they're not too young to run, so we know the impact civil society can make, be it in pushing the Child Rights Act or working on laws to see that women are carried along.